Elimination Chamber in Montreal was overall an excellent show with Roman Reigns retaining his undisputed WWE Universal Championship over the hometown hero, Sami Zayn. There was no Eddie Guerrero at No Way Out moment. There wouldn't have been an Eddie Guerrero moment at No Way Out had Brock Lesnar not already given his notice that he was leaving. Roman Reigns is not leaving, at least not uh, permanently the way Brock did in 2004. He's not going anywhere. In fact... Roman Reigns passed 900 days as the Universal Champion this week. He was already the longest reigning Universal Champion since they introduced the title six years ago. And he has the overall longest world title run in WWE since Hulk Hogan from 1984 to 88, which is a run that he will not surpass. The atmosphere at the Bell Center was electric, as you would expect it to be. CM Punk in Chicago vibes from Money in the Bank in 2011 when Sami Zayn walked out last night. And the way the crowd was healing on Roman, you know, the way they did to John Cena in Chicago. Everything was set up perfectly heading into this match. From the storyline twists with Sami over these many months, and Sami's family and his wife sitting in the front row, we got the ref bump. I expected we got the visual pin that I was expecting. They overbooked it with the second ref bump, but we had the Usos, both Usos, interfering in this match. Jay Uso, still torn between his family and his friend. Roman pie faced him a few times. He handed him a chair so that he could hit Sami Zayn with it. He turned his back on Jay. Jay had the chance to do to Roman what Sami did to Roman at the Royal Rumble, but he didn't do it. He didn't take the shot. Instead, Sammy went on to spear Roman, and instead he accidentally speared Jey Uso when Roman moved out of the way. And Roman just assaulted him with chair shots, one final spear after many uh, in this match, to finally put down Sami Zayn and to kill the dream. The biggest match of Sami Zayn's life. They protected him as best they could. They gave him that visual pin, kicked out of a lot of big moves. They had the Bloodline get involved. We had the two ref bumps. Solo Sokoa was the only member of the Bloodline noticeably absent. As the enforcer of the group, I don't know why he wasn't there. But in the end, Triple H made the correct decision. You do not end a run like this six weeks before your Super Bowl. You just don't do that. Kevin Owens came out after the match. He laid out Roman with a stunner. He laid out Jimmy with a stunner. Gave him a pop-up powerbomb through the announce desk. Laid out Paul Heyman with a stunner, which I'm sure he enjoyed taking more than he did the F5 that Brock Lesnar gave him at SummerSlam through the announce desk. Still takes a better stunner than Vince McMahon ever did. And we did not get the reunion between Sammy and KO. Not yet. It's coming. But we did not get it last night. Uh, We also did not get the Jey Uso turn or uh, Jey Uso making his final decision about where his allegiance lies. Uh, between Sammy and the Bloodline. They held off on both of those things because, you know, they have six more weeks of television to write before we even get to WrestleMania. And I liked the match a lot. I really enjoyed the match, but I thought, you know, when I was talking about the match last night, I thought it was a mistake for them not to take more of a stand on the Jey Uso stuff and to kind of leave that hanging the way that they did. But with the benefit of sleeping on it and uh, also watching it back one more time this morning, I I may have been a little harsh. I may have been a little harsh, a little reactionary to what they did there. Uh, Them holding off on the Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn reunion uh, is fine. I mean, it would have made for a nice moment in in Montreal for them to kind of come together there at the very end. Holding off on it is fine. Uh, Him coming out only after the bloodline screwed Sami out of the title. I know some people said, oh, that doesn't make any sense. What What a friend he is. Waiting until the very end to come out. Well, it makes sense. Because the two of them are not back on the same page yet. They're not back to being best friends. Owens knows what Sammy did for him at the Royal Rumble. So him coming out after the match to fight off the bloodline, that was kind of his way of telling Sammy, okay, now we're even. And now they can build it on television. But them not making a move one way or the other with Jey Uso, what that does is it keeps Jey's story open as far as what will he do? What will he do at WrestleMania? It could take this all the way to WrestleMania if they want. They could still set up a tag team title match, but they don't necessarily have to give us an answer, you know, a firm answer on what Jey Uso is going to do 
until we get to Los Angeles. You know, now he's going to be defending those titles with his brother, uh, but he can still play the conflicted role up until they get to the big show. You know, he he doesn't necessarily want to fight Sammy because he really likes the guy and he considers him a brother, but. His actual brother is his tag team partner, and they've got the titles that they've held for 600 some odd days by then. Uh, So he'll fight him. He'll fight Sammy if he has to, but he doesn't necessarily want to. So maybe there doesn't need to be a pre-WrestleMania beatdown uh, or an angle with Jey Uso turning on Sammy. One thing I mentioned last night, and I I should have taken my own advice and understood this better when it came to that finish. Because I said as much during the review last night, I said this, and a lot of people still don't understand this. This is less a story about Sami Zayn, and it's more a story about Jey Uso. The Jey Uso story arc has been playing out a lot longer than the Sami Zayn one has. This is every bit as much Jey Uso's story as it is Sami Zayn's, if not more. And Roman losing those titles, whether it's to Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania or if it's to somebody else later on, is probably going to hinge on what Jey Uso does. Remember where we started with this storyline at the very beginning of all this, Jey Uso being manipulated by Roman Reigns, yelling at Roman on television, I hate you, I hate you. This was back in the Thunderdome, that's how far back this story goes. But he fell in line. And it would be poetic if at the end of all this, it was Jey Uso who had a hand in costing Roman, you know, the source of all, the source of all of his power and the most important thing to him being the two championships that he has. Wouldn't it be something if Jey Uso was the one to cause his downfall in the end and and for this run that he's been on to come to an end? If Jey Uso is the one who causes it all to come crashing down, that's great storytelling. It is more interesting to see how it'll all play out on TV instead of blowing off that part of the story last night. So I I don't, you know, as I've had the chance to think about it more, I don't dislike it as much uh, as I did last night. Watch, I still, again, I think it was a little too overbooked, but I don't, you know, dislike that as much as I did watching it last night. The storytelling here overall, over the last nine months, year, you know, whatever, has been masterful. And I have faith in Triple H that it will play out the right way in the end. Roman Reigns winning last night was the right move. There should be no triple threat match at WrestleMania. They should not have two title matches, one on each night, with Roman losing on night one and then still having to wrestle on night two, because then it just takes a lot of the shine off the Cody match on night two if you do that. If they do the Cody match night one with another Sammy match advertised for night two, then all you're doing is splitting the crowd for the match on night one. I've had people pitch a triple threat to me with a double pin on Roman to split the titles. WWE should not go with any of these ideas. (laughs) They should leave these ideas at the doorstep. They should stay the course, and they can split the titles after WrestleMania, or, or whenever Roman finally loses, because more and more as I think about this, it is not nearly a surefire guarantee that Cody Rhodes is walking out of WrestleMania with those championships. I still think it it favors him, but far from a guarantee. So whenever Roman does finally drop the belts, plural, then they can figure out, okay, let's split them. How are we going to do this? Whether it's a draft, whether they just announce that they're splitting the belts, they can do whatever the fuck they want. It's their company. (laughs) They can do whatever they want, but you can split the belts once the reign is over. And Roman eats that first pin since 2019. Then you can worry about splitting the titles. Now, we also had Brock Lesnar against Bobby Lashley Part 3. And we got a cheap low blow finish. This is the finish they went with. I thought we would get a a non-finish. I thought they would just beat the hell out of each other, get double disqualified. People come out, they beat them up. I mean, there was a way to do kind of a a hot non-finish that, you know, was never going to please everybody. But the way they did it last night was totally lame and totally cheap. He was trapped in the hurt lock. He had nowhere to go. And so Brock lifts his leg. He kicks him in the dick and he gets disqualified. And clearly this is leading to another match between these two, which before the Bray Wyatt stuff on Friday, I thought that was always the plan was to get to WrestleMania and blow the feud off of WrestleMania. But clearly that's that's where this is headed. And, and let me just say one other thing about the match. And I said this last night. 
I get that these two are older now. They're at a phase now in their careers where they have their they have their match, they have their formula, they have their their moves that they do, and they can stick to that and they can make it work. Right? Brock Brock does whatever Brock wants to do. I get that. But it's a damn shame. As great as Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley both are as actual wrestlers, that they offered no variety in any of their matches. They've now had three singles matches, and they've offered no variety from one match to the next. And you could say that's a problem with all Brock Lesnar matches at this point. But I waited a very long time to see these two finally match up. Years. Years. I I wanted to see Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. I said, man, that could be a fun match. And, And there are elements of these matches they've had where, you know, it has been fun in spots. But now I look back, they just had their third match. And again, there's just no variety to any of them. It's just the usual spam shit. It's the same, you know, basic formula over and over again. I don't see another match at WrestleMania being any different with Bray Wyatt involved. And I say Bray Wyatt because on SmackDown Friday night, Bray Wyatt cut a promo and he teased a match with at least one of these men at WrestleMania. He said Bobby Lashley, Brock Lesnar. Whichever one of you wins at Elimination Chamber tomorrow night, I have a piece of advice for you. Run, he said. So Bray Wyatt is going to end up involved in this in some way. The most likely scenario, I think, uh, based on what happened last night, even though Lashley technically won by DQ, this ends up becoming a triple threat. You get a three-way feud going with Lashley, Lesnar, and Bray. And I don't know why Bray has to be involved in this. If they're going to blow off the Lashley and Brock stuff, if they couldn't give us a decisive winner last night, why the fuck does Bray Wyatt have to be involved in this at all? Why can't he just do something else? Uh, But they would not have done that segment on Friday if he was not going to be involved in some way. If they're going to do it, a three-way would be the way to go because I just don't... Brock Lesnar and Bray Wyatt as a one-on-one singles match at this point, especially the way that Brock, you know, kind of handles his matches, that sounds like a terrible fucking idea. I don't think those two would mesh well at all. I don't look at that and go, man, that would be a fun match. I look at that and go, man, that's going to end up being like this. It's going to end up being a massive disappointment. At least if you throw Lashley in there, you get the third guy in there. It could make things a little more interesting. But I, you know, don't count me in as one of these people who hears about Brock Lesnar against Bray Wyatt. And, oh, we haven't seen that before. Yeah, we haven't seen that before. But that doesn't mean that it's going to be any good. Now, we had two Elimination Chamber matches last night, with Asuka punching her ticket to challenge Bianca Belair at WrestleMania for the Raw Women's Championship, and Austin Theory outlasting five other men to retain his United States title in what I thought was one of the best Chamber matches that they have done in years. So, my predictions were on the money as far as both Chambers and who I thought was going to come out victorious. Asuka winning is the right choice, but I do feel like of the two women's title matches that are set for WrestleMania, that's the one that is most vulnerable to turning into either a triple threat with Becky Lynch involved or a fatal four-away with Becky and Bailey. Theory winning means that he's likely defending the U.S. title against John Cena at WrestleMania, which I think makes the outcome a little less unpredictable if the title is on the line. I don't think it's needed. But everybody had a chance to shine in that men's chamber match last night. Montez Ford, I thought, had a terrific first outing on his own. That that man is a star in the making. And Bronson Reed got beat, but it took three super kicks and then three finishing moves to put the big guy down. They did everything they could to protect him before he got pinned. I was not expecting him to be the first one eliminated in that match, but they did what they could uh, to protect him. And I thought he looked great for the time that he was in there. And then we had Logan Paul at the end showing up when the door was open. As they were taking Montez Ford out of the chamber, he snuck in. Took down Seth Rollins with the buckshot lariat and a curb stomp of his own. So you said they they lit the fuse at the Royal Rumble when Logan Paul eliminated Seth Rollins. After last night, though, it's going to be a raging inferno now between these two heading into WrestleMania. And the best part of all, they finally figured out what you and I already knew. Which is that Logan Paul is a heel. And he would be best as a heel. Which is what he's going to be going into this match at WrestleMania. Now Edge and Beth Phoenix, they got their revenge on the Judgment Day. Edge pin Finn Balor. So at least Rhea Ripley did not take the losing fall. Post show, they had a press conference. After Elimination Chamber. Austin Theory was out there and I guess he you know, threw down the open challenge. And he was acting all uh, full of himself. 
Edge and Beth came out later on, and Edge said that he heard what Theory said. He accepted Theory's open challenge for Ottawa on Monday for the United States Championship. Edge said that he hasn't wrestled there in probably 17 or 18 years, and he hasn't held gold in a while. He said, I retired as the World Heavyweight Champion, but I haven't hold, held gold since then. So he's going to get his shot on Raw tomorrow night. And you know what that means. Finn Balor is going to fuck it all up. That's how I see that going down. Finn Balor made it very clear when the match was over last night when the, they put the camera on him. Even though he lost, he said, this issue is not over between you and me. So that's how I see that going down. I think... They're going to play with people's emotions in Canada. They're going to get people wanting badly to see Edge win that U.S. title. And then uh, Finn Balor and the Judgment Day are going to fuck it all up. And that's then going to lead to one more match at WrestleMania, maybe inside Hell in a Cell, right? That was rumored originally for the Royal Rumble. Edge was filming a a Disney Plus show, so he wasn't available. Uh, So now there's talk that maybe they'll do Hell in a Cell at Mania. Maybe it'll be Edge against the Demon, even though the Demon died against Roman Reigns a few years ago, and he's still buried. Honestly, you know, as I think about this Hell in a Cell stuff, I was just talking about Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley. Hell in a Cell would make more sense to blow off the Lesnar and Lashley feud than it would Edge and Balor, if we're being perfectly honest. 